first ever NXT UK <laughs> pay per view is tomorrow. It's tomorrow at 2 p.m. They're doing this thing for uh, the Rumble weekend. I hope they air it because I want to see it. They're doing this like uh, tournament between 205 Live, NXT, and NXT UK. Guys, you heard about it? I heard about that. The yeah. I, I want to see it. Like, I hope they air that shit. Because in terms of pure wrestling, it may be the best that we get that weekend. So probably only be only because it's going to be at at access. I don't think they'll. I, I don't think Cent- they'll do it. Cedric Alexander put. Uh, that is put, in my opinion, the match of the week. He wrestled on 205 Live? Yeah, his, his match was match of the week. Yeah. So, I mean, he's on, a, he's on fire, except nobody knows it. You know? <laughs> well, that's always been he's the on thing. He's fire. Like, I think he's got all... some really fucking good matches lately. But, so. like he's the best. He's, he's literally the best kept secret. <laughs> it's crazy. Who, who, did he, who did he wrestle on 205 Live? Um, He wrestled Tazawa. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. And they're doing the four away for the rumble. So they're, they're, what, the cool thing about two hundred five live is when they have the champion wrestle in a four away for a pay per view, they do see combinations of matches of those of that main event leading up to it. Yeah. So we have Tazawa, we have Cedric, we have Buddy Murphy, and I forget the fourth guy. Um, <laughs> damn, I can't remember. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not, it's not Leo. TJP. No. It's not. Hey, TJP. It's not Leo Rush? He's kind of been on the back burner for a while. Mm. Not back burner, but like, I don't know, you know? And you know what? To be honest with you, in terms of heat, uh-huh. I wouldn't mind seeing Kendrick hitting another run as a heel. Oh, Brian, the, the Brian Kendrick? I mean, is it safe to, I mean, I don't know, do you agree with me on this? Is it safe to, to agree that when, you, when it comes to just like wrestling and promos, just the whole package, like he's probably the best one they got when he, when he talks about the most well-rounded well, yeah, I mean, but that's because he's also the oldest. Yeah, yeah, he's also the oldest, so. Like, he has that. But, I, for, I forgot he was on the brand, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, that's right. Second, second Cruiserweight champion. You said the second? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, he did, he did, he did win the belt, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. he beat, uh, he beat Perkett. Yeah, he beat TJP for it. I'm labeling the DVD for you as we speak. How about that? Oh, All right, for, for, two, for 205 Live? No, because oh. uh, <laughs> you have 205 Live. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing a compilation stuff. You know what I put on this disc? A bunch what? of good matches. One of them is a triple threat match between Rollins, Ambrose, and Roman Reigns from FCW. Hmm. Oh, from FCW? That, that's that's interesting. Uh, hmm. Roman Reigns wasn't called Roman Reigns. He was called Lee, Lee Ta, some, some shit like that. <laughs> You know what his name was. Damn good match. He's like some Samoan shit. <laughs> the triple threat match never happened on WE TV, but it happened there. So yeah. Uh, uh, it was just like a mix of matches, and the reason why is because they're really good matches, but I needed to get them like off my hard drive before I delete them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard drive's getting lower. And I'm like, you know what? I already have them on like a compilation for me, so I just I want to put them on you know, for you as well. It's really good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's like it's like a mix, it's like yeah. a mix of shit. Nah, I appreciate that. Really cool stuff. But, uh... I, I, yeah, no, I mean, I, mean I, I, I like Buddy Murphy, I do, but I still think work-wise, Cedric is the best worker they have now. And to me, now it's almost... It's not even disputable because of Mustafa Ali being called up to the main roster. Mm-hmm. So, I would say it was between those two, but now it's definitely Cedric. It's like, I don't, I don't even know what Buddy Murphy's done since he's had the belt. You know, I'm all for a feel-good moment, but... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But his moment's passed. <laughs> I mean, he can work. He can no, work. no, he, he, he can, but he's not exactly, like, you know, holding up the flag for the 205, you know, for the 205 Live division. Because he's not really a cruiserweight. Yeah. yeah. Now, but, I mean, originally, he's well, not I mean, even, a cruiserweight. But then again, even with Cedric, but, I mean, when, when the thing started, Cedric was. Yeah, but even on, even, so. on the, even on the show, Buddy Murphy's not even a cruise weight because every time they do a weigh-in, he always weighs in at 204 pounds. That's right. <laughs> right. So, like... Right about that. Like him, um, Mr. and Mrs. Canellis. <laughs> That's right. Like, 205 Live is just for them to, you know, just to... It's like, 205 Live is... 205 Live for them is NXT. And then, yeah. Yeah, and then eventually they'll get the because like come on they're, they're, they're not going to have Maria Canellis like forget her husband but they're not going to have Maria Canellis on 205 Live she's the no. only she's the only woman on 205 Live <laughs> no and, and you know for me 
don't really want her there either. I mean, uh, for me, it's, uh, 205 Live should be the brand where you get to watch pure wrestling. Yeah. And uh, you need angles because there has to be reason why these guys fight. But at the same time, you want to see the emphasis on wrestling. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind her being on the main roster, 205, I mean, on, uh, on NXT, but then 205 Live, I kind of like all that shit out of there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, so. on, on, on 205 Live, no one cares about the greatest love of all, you know? <laughs> Nobody does. And you know what I was going to say to you is why I thought Raw sucked. Um, oh, shit. I thought Raw sucked because, uh, for two reasons, the two worst combinations are personal feelings and then also creative. Uh-huh. Now, I'll get to the personal first. I don't like the whole Lashley thing. And I don't like the Sasha Banks thing. And here's why. Because they're going to be served up on a silver platter right before I told you. Anyone that gets a shot right before Mania yeah, or right after Mania is in that dreaded spot of doom yeah. where they're being served up for somebody to get warmed up for either a fresh title run or, or uh uh, end, of, end of the line run before Mania. And yeah, that's of what course. They're, doing. they're just serving them up. Yeah, so. everybody, every everybody on the planet, everybody on the planet knew that as soon as Ronda said the name Sasha Banks, right. I was like, I saw it. I'm like now, everyone, now? everyone was, yeah. <laughs> everyone was happy and pissed off at the same time because it's like, well, yes, yeah, yeah. she she should be in a high profile match, but we all know she's not going to win the damn thing. Exactly. Unless, exactly. Un, unless they're trying to do, unless they're trying to do Ronda versus Becky without the title, <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. Sa- there's no way Sasha wins this match on. Um, I'm with you. You know, with you. On, uh, at the Royal Rumble, which is like I said, which, which, which is bittersweet because it's about time she finally got a, like a like an op- a good opportunity out, away from Bailey. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's, the same, so. and it's the same thing with Seth Rollins. It's like I don't want to see Seth Rollins go over on Lashley either. <laughs> No, and, and getting, getting to that, I'm glad you brought that up. Getting to that whole thing, it, for me, it's almost like, okay, so if they are going to build up Rollins for Lesnar, then fuck, they're just using Lashley. I've seen, you know, we've seen wrestling enough to know how it works. Uh-huh. It, to me, it's almost like they're serving up Lashley as, as a guinea pig to show people, hey, you know, Rollins can go through a giant look. Yeah. You know, he just went through, a, yeah. you know, he just went through a Lashley, so... I hate it. I fucking hate it because it's like now, you know, for all, all the talk that Lashley's been doing you know, on social media based on the based on based on the bookers and then everyone else telling me he posts this, mm-hmm. it's just a, it's it's really a curveball. Is yeah, what it is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm not falling for it. I'm not excited <laughs> about it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Now here, here's here, here's here's my here's my take on it, which is okay. what which is what I said to you when we spoke on when we spoke on Monday or Tuesday. It wasn't just Lashley and Sasha Banks. They had Apollo Cruz and Ember Moon, you know. Tag yeah, in a tag match, they had them go over, you know, and they even did like a backstage interview where they talked about how they were going to do really good things. And I sat there and I, and I and I sat there, and then when the show ended. The show, like the show, ended yeah. with Bobby Lashley standing over Seth Rollins in triumph. So I'm just so so to me, I'm like, wow, you gave Apollo Cruz and Ember Moon like a like a big tag team win and showcase them. You have a damn cat, man. <laughs> Take the fuck out of like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're the man. Yeah, like, uh, show it. You know, uh, you know, show, show your expression and all. You don't get hat on your head. Yeah. I, I, I like. I, I personally like the headband, but you know. So, yeah, <laughs> so they had. You know, they they had Sasha Banks. You know, they gave her a title match against Ronda, and, and then they had her beat. They had her beat Nia Jax. You know, and yep. then and then they had Bobby Lashley go over. Which should have happened the way it did. Yeah, which should have happened the way it did. Then they had Bobby Lashley go over. The darling Seth Rollins, and I thought, yeah. to, and I thought to my, and what it, but what it, what it happened. Beatdown was like an amazing heel beatdown, by the way. Yeah, no, I little, loved it. You know, I, I like how he put, how he spine busted him through the table. So I'm sit, I'm sitting here at home, and I'm just like, I just watched a Monday Night Raw, where like all the black wrestlers basically, <laughs> <laughs> where like all the black wrestlers on the show went over. And you know what's weird is that you know Vince does this all the time when he opens it up every year. You would think that this would happen like a week later when they're doing the Marvel Luther King Raw. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah. was opened up with a montage. Uh-huh. And yeah. I swear I said to myself, I'm like, okay, this is Vince's way of like on, on Marvel Luther King Day screwing all the black wrestlers that day. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, but... point, and pointing at, wait a minute, uh-huh. it's okay because look what I did this week, you know? No, well, 
well, here, here, here was here was my whole thing. When, like I said, when when I saw that all the black wrestlers got over, I, w- I was like, I was surprised and I was shocked, and then I started getting a little bit happy about it. But then I was like, wait, of course all the black wrestlers went over tonight. He brought Hogan back. Oh wow, Jarrell, you're a genius. I didn't think about that shit. That's actually a good call. And I was like, no, I was like, Damn it, because he knew. <laughs> Holy shit, this is no, yep. this isn't like. Yep. Just so you know, this isn't like you know me just saying that as like a <laughs> as a good call between wrestling diehards. Hey, he knew that he might get backlash from the press. Yeah. Uh huh. He could point to that show and look. Hey, hey, look! All of our black guys went over. Yep. Yeah. Told you right. Yep. Oh shit. <laughs> Wow. I know, like there was something about it where I was like, too many black. Too ma- there was something about it that said to me, too many black wrestlers are going over. There's something. Wow. <laughs> like there's, I can't even argue with that. But you, but you know what? But you know, but you know, like, but you know what triggered? You know what? I would actually, I would actually say, I would, I would bet, I would bet like something that would mean, you know, a lot to me, put in my personal life to uh-huh. say that. I would put that up on the line and say that that's a fact. I could actually yeah. say that's a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. What triggered it? Yeah, I totally agree with you. What triggered it? Because, like I said, because 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 even even with the Apollo Ember Moon match, like Alicia Fox was involved with the match, you know. She was. Like you know, Sasha, you know, Sasha, you know, pin Nia. I, I like how it seems like her character is tagging with Jinder Mahal, but she doesn't like like him, or she yeah. doesn't, she doesn't like the Yeah, she's like she has, yeah, she has like the Singh brothers. I, I, I kind of like it though. There's a cool dynamic to it. By the way, her dance was cute. Yeah, it's fun, like like during the mix match during the the mix match challenge. I only I I only loved watching her and Jinder's matches just to see her dance to his theme music. <laughs> That's a good point, man. I I, I have to like hand it to you because I I swear <laughs> it didn't even remotely cross my mind until you said it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it didn't you know and it didn't it didn't cross my mind until I like I said to myself I was like wait a minute. Did you just close the show with Bobby Lashley and Leo Ru- and Leo Rush standing over Seth Rollins? Something's wrong. <laughs> I was like, something's wrong because unless unless Vince just it's cool that they actually gave him a new shirt now though. Yeah. The show, the show. Like I hate it when wrestlers wear t shirts I'm saying like at least now he's he's got stuff that he's actually selling. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy I'll buy, I'll buy an almighty t shirt. So it's, it's oh, sure. a, so so it's, but, it's one. No, I, I swear I didn't think about that. I actually did. It, yeah, it didn't cross my mind. Yeah, uh, it makes. I would ask. It's, it's so insightful what you said that I would actually say, "Damn, that's really legit." What happened? Like, yeah, yeah. On wow. yeah, on on on, on 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 the night the red and yellow scumbag return <laughs> returned to yeah, the. Yeah, you know, I read the new stuff. Uh huh. Online, I try to like go all to my new site. Nobody really said anything about it. Nobody really cared. I guess. Well, what? Nobody said anything. Wasn't about- talk about like anybody talking to him or having a problem. Like no one seemed to. They ever didn't get brought up. Maybe something happened that we don't know about, but nothing was mentioned as far as it being like an issue for anybody. Yeah. Well. Maybe maybe just because the whole me Gene thing was like. I Maybe mean, the guys in the back thought, hey, wait a minute, we, if we do that, that this disrespects me, G. Well, you know? there, there are a lot of people who just don't want to go there, so they're just like, so the the excuse they'll give is, well, it was about me and Gene, you know, just that. That's what I'm saying, like, they, they, they knew that if they said something, yeah. that it would be like, wait a minute, we can't because of the timing of it, like. You know, but plus, like, there are a lot of people who... Like, like you know, and, and I'm, I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm just gonna be flat out 100 percent honest about this. When it yeah. when it comes to all the all the people, the podcasters who review who review Monday Night Raw, right. they're not. Let's just say they're not the type of people who would pick up on the black wrestlers going over on the night of Hogan's return. It's true. You're right. Like something like that wouldn't mean anything to them for them to notice that. <laughs> you know. It would only mean something to a person who is truly affected by the situation. Based on his uh, shoots that I've heard, if he was still alive, you know who would be great at a podcast? Bad News Brown. Who? Bad News Brown. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. He'd be great at a podcast. Yeah, he would. He'd he, he, he tell, he tell it like it is. <laughs> he would. He really would. Yeah, like he would tell it like it is. So. He really would. But, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it just... Mm-hmm. I'm... I'm I'm shocked. I mean, I just watched it last night, but I'm still shocked that I didn't think about it. I'm like, oh, this makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, you're like, like you're pro- you're probably so like, 
Well, because, well, like you said, like, because you, you didn't really think about the Apollo and Bermuda thing, but you were more focused. See, you're, see, like, I get, I get, I, I, I get, what, yeah, I get where you're coming from because you were more focused on the fact that you're finally pushing two people who deserve it, but we all know they're not going to do anything. <laughs> like, like we all know they're stepping stones. So, as, you know, and, 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 plus, and plus, knowing you, like me knowing you the way I do, like you probably, you probably skipped the whole. Yeah, I just. Watched it, but oh, I, didn't, like, I didn't focus on it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't focused on it completely the way you were. So. Yeah, you know, and, and again, and, 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 and again, and I wasn't, I wasn't focused on it myself. Like I said, it did, it did not. Had, had they you not, probably left a bad taste in your mouth, and you try to like, and you'll win it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Had it, had, had they not ended the show with Lashley standing over Seth Rollins, that thought would have never crossed my mind. AW, AEW, they actually do have a network. Yeah, yeah, the announcements can be, guess what? NBC? (laughs) TNT. Really? Oh, shit. Yep. Yep. When the hell did, uh... Uh, are you online? Are you near the computer? Yeah. Google AEW TNT. Yeah. I'm curious to see what pops up. So they start, they start in this shit again. (laughs) On Tuesdays, by the way, too. Live. Oh wow! So they're trying to compete with SmackDown. <laughs> Not a bad idea. They probably like to hell with Raw because they know Raw is a shit show anyway. Well, shit. That's probably why they should um. What popped up? Hold up. Hold up. I'm sitting here playing this kid in uh <laughs> Street Fighter. I'm about to beat him in two seconds. Yeah. Got him. All right. <laughs> All right let's see. I hate when people. I hate when people pick Guile. Yeah, like I'm glad you know. It's such a fun. Like it's like. See. Like. You're surprised. I knew. <laughs> like they're like I don't have any respect for guile players. You know. It's I mean, but then if you have Raw, you can you just do the uh, the the you know the the. the well, the dragon play. It's not the same. It's, see, it's not the same with 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 Ken with Ken and Ryu the way it is with Guile. Cause the cause the thing is when when they do the show Ru Ken. It's them just jumping straight up into the air. When Guile does that flash kick, it takes up the whole goddamn screen. And if you're Chong Lee, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> Even if she does a spin kick against Guile, he does the jackknife. Yeah, it's like you can't. That's why I'm like, he's he's such a shit character. <laughs> I fucking hate him. When I used to play, when I used to play Street Fighter, every time there was someone to Guile who try that move. Yeah, yeah. You know who would actually affect him well? Dalza. Yes, because of the reach factor. Because the reach factor. So, like, anyone who... If I had Dalza, he, he'd be screwed. He wouldn't be able to do much. He, to, he wouldn't be able to crouch down the whole game. Yeah. Well... I think like a punch, whatever. Uh, unfor- unfortunately for me, I don't use Dal Sim. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If you got so good to the point where you, like... You know, tr- try try guys you haven't really played with and see how you do it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the next challenge. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm already ten characters in. All right, so let's 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 see. Um, Cody Rhodes, the Cons, and Chris Jericho make it yep, official. You know, you know who also signed Neville? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw Neville sign Jericho. Who was called? Who was now? Who was called? Well, before even he came to to like Matt, he was called Pac. What like P- his name? What PAC? Yeah, that was always his name. By oh, the okay. way, the Indies. Oh. Prior to uh, to working for Vince, so that's. It's that when you see if you see their name pop, it doesn't mean. All uh, yeah no actually here, here it is here yeah. all elite wrestling in negotiations with Time Warner. What do you think? Daily DDT. That would be. Isn't that what I said? Isn't that what I said? Yeah, you said yeah. Impact? You said the other day. He's like they need a major network. And that's and I I'm glad I said it because it just broke. And get this, three things that we were handed as fans that we should be grateful. for. <laughs> the TNT factor. The live factor and the competition on Tuesdays factor. Yeah, but see, you know, what? either ninety minutes or two hours. Let me tell you something. For that amount of content to have two hours live, they're gonna have to have a hell of a roster. But you wanna know it something though? Me, yeah. But you wanna know something though? I'm actually the one thing about it that I'm not happy about. Yes. I'm not happy about the fact that it's on Tuesday. Oh, and by the way, because I actually like SmackDown. Almost close to sign the weight Barrett. Very close. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, I know because you like this, but here's the thing. Yeah, actually, I like you, you, you DVR and stuff, so it's okay. Um, it'll be kind of like the 
worse because you, you'll get a feel of, of clicking back and forth. It, it's, it's, a, it's a cool feel to know that if you got the remote, you know, I don't have a remote. I don't have cable. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, don't have, you know, I don't have cable either. But That's what I'm saying. Like, it's a new era in a way, but it, I'm telling you, it's still that... It's, it, when, when people are saying Vince is trying to do new stuff now for the fans, it's uh-huh. not that. But you know you what? You your theory about, about why he put the black guys over here, right? <laughs> My theory about why he's trying... Well, because you're right about that. You know, the whole Hogan factor. Yeah. My theory about why he's trying to do different stuff, even though he's really not, but he's saying that in mm-hmm. his mind he's doing new, fresh stuff. He's sweating because he must have known maybe a month prior to even you and I knowing, the public knowing, yeah, yeah. that this was something imminent. Because you got to remember... He's in the network world. He yeah, hears, of course. He hears rumblings, and I guarantee you, his call-ups, his quick call-ups, are going to get pushed fast, and they're being <laughs> called up because he's sweating the fact that AEW is going to sprinkle in some vets, but they're going to make it, which I like, that they're going to make it more about well, the shit, guys he... who aren't, I don't like the word young, but they're, they're using guys in their prime, which I like. You know, they're, they're next targets, and by the way, I'm a fan of the following guys, so... Maybe some people go, oh, God, but their next target is right back, from what I hear. Well, not you know, I'm not saying oh God because I think the dude. Yeah, like there's, not, there's nothing wrong with Ryback. I mean, he's a good he's a good talent to have on your roster. The you following know. guy, he's not going to get a, a shitload of wins, but he's going to put guys over and help him in the locker room. The, 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 so the three guys are targeting next. Uh-huh. Wade Barrett is imminent, but the three guys they're targeting after that are Ryback, mm-hmm. RVD, which I like. Okay. I actually like that. I don't know how you feel about that. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, I don't care either way, but I guess it'll, because it is him, it'll be good for the brand. It'll be good for the brand. I personally just aren't, in, I'm just not invested in RVD anymore. Yeah. I never thought, I thought he was a bit worried, but he kind of <laughs> gives you cash and he gives you name value. Yeah, yeah, the I mean. One, the third one is Goldberg. Google AEW and Goldberg. No, well, that, well the, Gold, the Goldberg stuff I did hear about. The show in May, I think, will be like a pay-per-view, or you could stream it, and on that show, they're going to announce the TNT deal, and it makes sense, because yeah, think yeah. about it, May, you and I know this because we're fans of NBA <laughs> also, you wouldn't do a show and debut it in May on TNT, because the playoffs are happening, it makes sense that in May, they're not going to do their TNT stuff, they're going to announce the TNT deal, from what I read, on their debut show, so they're going to have one show in May, mm-hmm. then hang tight until September, which is a new fall season. Yeah, of course. of course. Really good stuff. So they, they're gonna they're gonna just get a ton of guys, from what I understand. And, I mean, I'm um, still yeah. Like, that, that, I mean, at this point, all I care about three vets on, on the current WWE roster mm-hmm. who are disgruntled, or the contract is up, are gonna jump ship, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. And two mid carders who are disgruntled. That's five current guys that are not. <laughs> no one's really saying who they are, but well, every, five people. That's because everybody's five. disgruntled. <laughs> well, they better yeah. start. Well. They better start pushing. They better start pushing some people real quick. <laughs> Guarantee you, Shelton's one of them because he wasn't even on the fucking on the show this Tuesday. Like, he wasn't yeah. On the show. Huh? Benjamin wasn't even on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that I know. That's crazy. Which is I don't if know. If he was on Raw, he would have been over. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with him. He would have got a win on Raw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if he was on. Yeah, he's, that's, that's you, know, you know what? I, I guess I guess the yellow red bastard being on the show might be a good thing after all. <laughs> yeah, that guy was gonna ask you in that case. Yeah, let him. Maybe, let him. Um, maybe you're, you're, maybe you're all for seeing this guy getting booked. Yeah, let him. Let him. Let him. Let him host WrestleMania if they do Lashley versus Lesnar. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, he's like, he, he owns the Baltimore Ravens, I think. He owns like, is it Baltimore or is it another team? Tampa? I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what else he owns, but I did see something earlier today. It was like billionaire backs, you know, like brand new wrestling promotion. I read his uh, net share worth. It's seven point eight five billion. Hmm. That's come on. We always said this. If you're gonna get a guy to back a promotion, I love. I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I, I love that Tommy Dream. Oh, okay. I know what it's called. Tommy Dreamer's got his indie. He had it for a few years. Mm-hmm. You know, great. Uh, it's cool that, you know, Lucha's doing their thing. Great. But what you, what you needed to compete with Vince is you needed to have a guy who had a billion, a billion dollar fucking bank account. 
Yeah. It's a secure network deal because he's, you know, has, has enough credibility, I guess, to yeah, yeah. be able to procure a deal like that. And someone who also has knowledge of sports. These guys, uh, they have, the, the, so the son, they're Pakistani. The son, the son has more knowledge, so he's running it. Well, that's the, that's the, the thing. Like sixty something, but he's not like he's not. He's just backing it. Yeah. But he's well, that's not. the thing. I mean, I guess at this point, the big question is like, are these people even wrestling fans? <laughs> yes. You so know. the son. So the son appeared on um, the Edge and Christian show. Yeah. And he appeared on X Pac, not Pac, but X Pac's yeah. uh, mm-hmm. podcast. You can Google X Pac and yeah, yeah. whatever the owner guy was, and he was speaking really, really well. Like he's been a fan since he was six, and he's been like, it's great to have that. What I don't like. He's too much of a fan where now he gave, and I like Cody, but like he gave Cody and his wife executive roles, the Young Bucks executive roles. If this ends up being well, that, WCW where guys get yeah, creative control, that's the biggest problem. There's going to be a problem. Well, that's the biggest so problem. Cody's smart. He's, he's going to do what Hogan didn't do. And, and if it's Cody's a, smart, he'll job. I mean it. Yeah. Just to show, just to show other people, hey, if you're going to come in here, I'm not going to be a guy who's going to put myself over. Mm hmm. Because, so that, because that's Bucks should job or at least not even be visible for the first few months. Because that, that, because that, that's my whole, that's my concern when it comes to bringing over certain wrestlers. Because I don't want to see Shelton Benjamin go over there if they're all going to take turns beating him in the ring. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like hell. If, if, all, if I mean, if all, if all elite wrestling wants to separate themselves from WWE, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. They're going to track their, their, their logic. They yeah, but it has, but, but it has, it has to be. You know, he's in his 30s, but like but, the guy who the, the, the older son said his logic mm-hmm. is that they're going to count wins and losses and make it mean something. Yeah, because there has to be, there has to be like a legitimate fairness to it. Like you said, it just can't, yeah. it just can't be Cody putting him and his wife over, you know. Can't be. You know. Can't be. And here's the surprise I was telling you about from mm-hmm. what I understand. So the show they're going to have in May is like a pay-per-view they could stream and they could announce TNT for September. But on that show, he will either appear or be announced, from what I understand, because they're making a strong, strong, heavy pitch. And you know he wants to beat WWE. It's, it's, we talked about it yesterday. It's, it's punk. Oh, they're actually speaking to him? They're, they're speaking to him. They're in, they're in communication with him. They're in talks with him. And there's been nothing reported online about him responding or talking back, but they're in talks with him. They're reaching out to him. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Getting out. I'm telling you right now, that, that, that's the first fire. That's the first shot fired. That's that's. Well, <laughs> well the first. If you can land a punk and a Goldberg, and then you sprinkle in the other guys I mentioned. You got the Wade Barrett. You got Neville. Uh, you get let's just say Shelton's on board. I mean, I'm like, this is this could be something, man. Yeah. This could be something. Like. Yeah. As long yeah. as long as long as it's fair. As long as it's fair, you know. Because like I said, it's like if you, you know, because 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 here because here's the here's the thing. This is exciting though. No, it is. It is. It, I mean, it's exciting to see like where it'll go. But you here, why two shizzle in there? Huh? You got why two shizzle already? <laughs> why two shizzle? So, but but my whole thing is, you put the belt. You put the belt on a black Jim wrestler. Ross too, I forgot. Yeah, I'm yeah, Jim, yeah, Jim Ross. Yeah. But but you you put the belt on a black wrestler, like the main title on a black wrestler. Yeah, it has to be so incredible. Yeah, it has to be somewhat credible. You've now, like, they've basically just, they, they, it's like they've just given themselves a tremendous shot in the arm because you know how many black wrestlers in, in other promotions are going to say to themselves, hey, these guys actually don't bury black people. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that I actually would be in favor of the first champ. I agree with that. I think that has to be the case. I agree. Mm-hmm. Because, but, because, yeah. But, it, I can't keep saying this, it has to be the right guy because yeah, of course. if you put someone in there that also does not to work, I don't care what color they are. Yeah, of course. It's going to set a bad precedent. Yeah. And here's what else the owner said, which I like. Mm-hmm. You don't like this, probably. So the women and the men get equal pay. Okay, well, I mean, that's nice. Which thing. is cool because it, it attracts you yes. know, workers from all genders, I guess, to say, hey, like, and here's the second shot that'll be fired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if they procure punk, yeah. that's, I think, the first major shot. The second shot well, I mean, the first shot would be a TNT deal being official. That's that's huge. Mm-hmm. The TNT thing means you got a TV deal with a huge network. You're going to get followers no matter what. Mm-hmm. Number two is if they get punk. And number three, and this is big, it'll be the first major crossover guy that jumps ship from WE. Yeah. 
Despite, I mean, despite his removal <laughs> for, yeah, the, for, yeah. the, for the last you know episode. what? Yeah. If they debut in September, they're smart. From what I read, the, the freeze that the WWE puts on was six months. Six months. Yeah, yeah. There are guys that at the end of January, I heard there's like four, but they're not mentioning who it is, though. Well, that's why it's, well, 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 that's why, like you said, it's smart that, they, that they're not going to start till May. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and in September is their TV stuff. So from what I understand, in late January, there's a a few big time guys that are going to become free agents in WWE mm-hmm. but they're not mentioning who they are and they could resign sure but you would say out of five of them if two or three don't yep that's all you need even if there's a freeze on them for six months if you do the month that's till January which mm-hmm. means by September when they're on TNT yeah they could debut yep. they could debut so yeah it's a big deal yeah, yeah. Big deal. Right. You know, I know they're gonna get a bunch of impact people. You know, this is really bad for impact. I mean, <laughs> this is not good for impact. Uh, Ring of Honor, not so much because they actually have guys that want to work there. They have that like ECW mentality in Ring of Honor. Yeah. People love yeah. working there. Impact is the opposite. People don't want to be there. Yeah. And I would expect like, you know, they'll probably get Austin. Morrison, they'll probably get Austin, Austin Aries. Yes. Uh, even Del Rio I mean there's a bunch of guys yeah I forgot about get. Del Rio they'll probably get Moose yeah yeah, yeah Moose I mean I, I would be cool if Moose is their first uh, champion, yeah I'd be, I'd be cool with that too because Moose, 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 Moose puts it down I think that's more realistic than Benjamin because I don't know if he even would jump ship who knows but with Moose you got to believe that because he has that connect with the Bucks and with Cody you know he's got the rapport with those guys they're going to be after him so mm-hmm. that's more realistic I think yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's interesting, man. It's, like for the first <laughs> time in 18 years. I mean, well, not even because in 01, I can't really call it competition. <laughs> the, first, the last time it was competition was in 99. The last time you actually, so it's the yeah. first time in 20 years where there's like, legit, you know. So there's fear of legit competition. <laughs> yeah, there was that brief spell we talked about where TNA kind of like walked in the doors on Monday nights and had a chance, but then as soon as we realized that Bischoff and Hogan were booking. Yeah, it was a ruse of rap. See, I like, I like, I like your idea of when they do their very first TNT show to have you know do the fireworks, have the lights go out, do your fireworks, whatever the hell they're gonna do. Have somebody be like, "Welcome to all elite wrestling," and then when the lights right. co- and then when the lights come on, CM Punk is like, you know, CM Punk and like AJ Lee are in the ring, you know? Yeah. Or cool, or like, or like Indian style. Yeah. Or, or or this this would be cool too. Have Cody have Cody and Brandy come out. You know, because they're you know they're married. They're a couple. Yes. Have the two of them come out. Have them address the audience, and then have Punk's music hits, and have him and his wife come out. Yes, and you know what's cool about this? This yeah. is interesting. That could work too with Punk's theme. You yeah. got to remember, yeah. the, the group. And I remember them because you know, from a kid in the eighties, the group's name was, and it's before the show came out. So it had nothing to do with the show. Was, yeah. The group's name was Living Color. Yeah. And cult of personality is not a WWE license. Yeah, it's so not. It's not. So he can come out to fucking cult. So as soon as cult of personality comes out, yeah, everybody. It won't be out of effect that people know who the hell he is. Yeah, everybody's gonna lose their shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, this, this, you know what? And I gotta say this too. I pray that like this, these you know owners are not swayed by the charm of like you know the Hogan's and the Bischoff's I'm telling you right now because you you know those guys smell blood they're sharks and you know what mm-hmm. say what you want about them they're smart they're smart like yeah. they know how to always well, they, yeah, they, they, well, well the, we, we all know Hogan knows how to put himself over <laughs> yeah he does and I'm like man if, if I don't think that'll happen I think more or less people kind of realize that with TNA people realize that like you, you need this guy off your roster mm-hmm. like, he's a pariah <laughs> And plus, the, you know, the controversy helps in this case. No one's going to want to touch him. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, man. I'm telling you, like, if there are a couple of bets that can make an impact there, uh, I, I they're probably that their tag division is yeah. strong. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, speak, speak, speaking of Brack, Brack, speaking of black wrestlers, I'm actually pre- I'm, I'm pretty sure the first the first African American wrestler they're probably they're most likely going to sign is probably Jay Lethal. He's like one of their guys, you know, so... Yeah, I was going to say, if, if anyone becomes world champ besides Moose, that would go for it. <laughs> yeah, or Shelton Benjamin. Who I've said in the last three years is my top three of, like, you know, worker of the year. He would be... Yeah, I, he'd be someone i put in there. Well, I mean, with Shelton, yeah, I just don't know about him. I don't know if he's, like, got a two-year deal. I, I don't know what his deal is as far as, like, is he someone who can get out? Well, the good... See, but, but the, good, the, good thi- the good thing about it, though, is... 
especially if All In does become very, very popular and it does have success. The beautiful thing about it is, if you want, like, if you're in the WWE and you want to get pushed in the WWE and you're not happy with what's going on, all you have to do is give them the thought that you might leave when your contract is up. True. You know, it's true. Because it's like now, the fear is what. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're going to see better booking. Like the fear is worth more than the actions, <laughs> you know, you know so, so so to speak. But you know what? You know when when you um when you took off, I actually thought about because remember I told you it's like I'm not happy about it because I like SmackDown. I, I thought about this because because remember when when WWE does this Fox deal, it's actually yeah. it's SmackDown that's going to Fox, not Raw, and they did say. Fox actually wants Ronda Rousey on the show. So Oh, and also they're moving to Fridays. Oh yeah, yeah, Damn, yeah. I actually don't like that they're not at the end. <laughs> but they're gonna um No, but but the thing is, but what's gonna happen is because of the because of the Fox, Vince is gonna uh-huh. Vince is gonna move Lesnar and Ronda. He's gonna he's basically gonna take everybody is Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. He's basically gonna swap SmackDown and Raw. <laughs> like SmackDown's gonna become yeah. a new Raw just so he can appease the Fox um the Fox executives. Yeah, that makes sense. So which means so which means when the Fox thing starts, I'm probably gonna end up becoming a Raw fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, it's that part is all good. Let's just hope that from what I understand it's at the end of the year though. Yeah. So by then uh, let's hope that AEW yeah. kind of is like mm-hmm. kicking butt. Because if they're kicking butt, that means yeah. you're gonna have to reshape a bunch of things. There. But you know what stinks being like being in Cody Rhodes' position isn't a good thing because A, unlike Well he's Triple H the now. yellow and red walrus, <laughs> um with Cody yeah, yeah, he can still go, but Col- so it's like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, so in a way, you're kind of like putting yourself in a box because, yeah. as an exec, you can't like say, "Oh, I want to push myself." But then, as a worker, he's in his prime. Mm-hmm. Which is true. I mean, he can he can push himself. It just can't be. He just can't Triple H it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because because. The, the, same with the Bucks too, though. Yeah, same with the Bucks because like basically, basically he is the new Triple H. So he's the Triple yeah. H, he's the Triple H of AEW. So the best way the best way to put him the best the best thing for him to do is right. to put on, is to put on great matches with people, have great feuds, win the title, let someone beat you, you know, and then. Are you still in the computer? Yeah, I'm still sitting in front of the computer. Okay, can you type this in? Sure. Hold on. Hold on. AEW producer. I'll give you a hint. He's a, he's a tag team legend. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Billy Gunn? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Billy Gunn on the new AEW role, being the only producer. I'm actually okay with it. He's the only... I've heard a lot of his interviews, and let me tell you something. He's, he's, he's a smart dude. I'm actually okay with it. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. It says... He's it... He talks to talent really well. Um, he doesn't push his own people, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Shit the so it's cool again. It's cool to see guys who like. Well, they know, said they said he's the only producer. They're trying. They're trying to get Dutch Mantel as a booker, and if they do, I like it because Dutch yeah. is a good book. Like, right. like I said, my 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 eyes are open. Like you know, you know how like when when there's a pet, like a dog or a cat, on the couch, yeah. and they're and they're sleep on the couch, and then yeah. their their owner comes home, or they or or like trouble is a brewing, and then the animal just pops his head up. That's me right now. I'm just not ready to jump off the couch and go see what's going on. I'm not either. <laughs> no, no, but you gotta admit this. Like the TNT thing is cool. Yeah, but the intrigue. But the intrigue is. And, and you gotta also remember, like the main talent they're getting. You know what'd be neat? Uh, so, so Booker T's doing his first match in a few years in his own promotion. Okay. It'd be great if, like, you know, you have the Bucks talk in the ring and brag about shit, mm-hmm. and then you hear the Harlem Heat music. <laughs> yeah. That'll get you jumping. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
You know, at the Did, end of the day, though, the Heat would have to kind of put the younger ones over. They would, eventually. No, of course. It would, be, it would be a nice little, like, passing of the torch feud because it's like, wait a minute, here you have, I don't agree with this, but you have, like, the hottest team in the world, which is the Bucks. They are, they're considered. <laughs> um, I don't, though. I still think the best, if it's all the best team, it's the Briscoes. That's, I've always said that. I mean, shit. I know you're not watching Ring of Honor, but they're, they're doing some. Shit, after, um, after, after the match that I saw at, um, at Impact's Homecoming uh-huh. pay-per-view, shit, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm pushing, I'm pushing that LAX. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Steiner showed up. I'm pushing LA, oh, LAX, like. Crimson showed back up, too. Yeah. Like, I, I'd actually. It was Crimson, Steiner, and, um, that English, the English guy, I forget his name. <laughs> you saw it, right? I didn't see their first show yet. I saw the I saw their homecoming pay per view, but I did not see their first their first um, televised program that was that's not on. Um, oh, what's okay. we'll call it? So. Yeah, no, I, I I caught homecoming. It was pretty good. Yeah, I caught it when Wednesday. Right? Yeah. yeah, it was not like last Sunday, I think, but I didn't catch it live. Yeah, but um, no, yeah. but if they if they um, I mean yeah, so the Briscoes are like they're still the best team, mm. but because the Bucks are like you know they're a team that has the most buzz. Mm-hmm. If you're the Harlem Heat, you yeah, come yeah. back to have a match against <laughs> a team like that. But if you're, you're better... able to generate, get heat off of their buzz, and then if you want to give them something back when they beat you, it's like, wait a minute, we just beat a legendary team. Yeah. They get even more buzz. But if you're Booker T, so win, you know. But if you're Booker T, who does um, pay per views and stuff for the for the E, I don't think he's happy, man. He doesn't seem like he is. Well, he's not really. I mean, aside from doing promoted from Raw to doing kickoff shit. Yeah, aside like, aside from doing kickoff shows, he doesn't really do anything. Yeah. That's right. Like, there's nothing. You know, yeah. I, I would be if I were him. I'd be pissed. Sure. I, I miss I miss him on Raw Talk and on commentary. And if he if he would just jump ship to do commentary, I wouldn't mind seeing him and Jim Ross be a team. Or, oh, no. you know, who else? If they could throw in JB on, that'd be cool too, because he's not doing shit either. <laughs> yeah. They, got, got, yeah, they, they gotta throw in commentators that have worked with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Familiar, familiar. I would be pushing. I'd be pushing for a vet that was, won't happen. But I keep saying he's the most underrated commentator of all time. The guy I'd be pushing for would be Shivani, but he's not gonna get it. <laughs> yeah. Shivani's just a damn good commentator. But, but why, why, why don't you think it'll happen? Because you think Tony Shivani likes his WWE money? He's not getting it. And by the way, I saw a shoot. He, I liked him even more. He was like, yeah. You know, he's like, I got a couple of offers, but to be honest, he goes, I'm, I'm ma- managing a Starbucks. He goes, I'm happy. You okay. know, I'm, I'm home all day. Like, I'm not really, like, you know, he goes, he says he doesn't want to be part of, like, the corporate structure of the WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, shit, if AEW knocks on his door, you never know if he'll think differently. <laughs> but, just... but it all depends on where their home base is. See, that's the one thing I haven't, heard, like, heard. Like, where is their home base? Do you think you they, know? do you think, do you think it's necessary that they have one, though? Because no. I, you know, but because you, I get... But for the older, for the young, no. But for the veterans, yes. I think for the vets... See, okay, so when Bischoff said, in 93, Bischoff said, I'm going to move the worldwide and set... Way before Nitro yeah. was even on the air. You had worldwide, you had Saturday night, you had Pro, you had the Beanie Vet. Those were their shows. Mm-hmm. He moved all the tapings to Disney. Yeah. From Atlanta to Disney. From the Turner offices near the area in Atlanta, Georgia, they were moved to Disney. Mm-hmm. A lot of the workers liked it because they lived in Florida. Yeah, yeah. So he was able. Remember, if they didn't go with Disney, they wouldn't have got. They wouldn't have got Hogan. But yeah, they damn sure wouldn't have got Hogan. Because no, he was. He was doing. He was doing the thunder. Yeah, I was, about to, I was about to say he was shooting thunder. Yeah, yeah. on the same lot, and then uh, Bischoff just told like Flair. Flair got him pretty much. Flair went to Hogan and said, "Listen, it's it's cool. This Bischoff dude's all right." You know, he convinced him. And in, in, in return, Hogan was nice enough to have Flair job every match they had. <laughs> <laughs> Flair was supposed to win one. And then at the last minute, Hogan called an audible and goes, it doesn't work, brother. <laughs> that was his payment, but... Um, I mean, as much, I mean, as much as as much as an, as much as a son of a bitch as Hogan is, I don't yeah. mind. I don't mind when Ric Flair gets his either. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, especially now when we know what we know. But, mm-hmm. but but so that's what I'm saying. Like the home base would matter for the vets. Yeah. I mean, if it's let's just say in a place where there's a bunch of vets, they would probably say, "Well, wait, we're here anyway, so why not?" Yeah, true. And if they 
got Billy Gunn as their guy, I would think that it would be probably like it would be neat to know that it's in Florida, like near the uh, near the training, the performance center. Mm-hmm. Like, it'd be cool. You know, it'd be cool yeah. if it'd be cool if their home base was in New Jersey. It'd be right. It'd be right next door. <laughs> well, it'd be right next door to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> they, but they'd also be right next door to um, to Vince. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's true. I feel like if they're, if they're in Jersey, they're not going to get a bunch of people down there. There'll be a bunch of guys. You know, you know, you know, many, you know, you know how many? You know how many NXT? You know how many current NXT? You know how many NXT and current main roster talents are actually from New Jersey? <laughs> um, I know Sonya Deville is. Yeah. I I think Enzo. Well, Enzo was, but he got cut. Liv Morgan's from Jersey. They could bring Enzo in too. Yeah, they could bring him. Yeah, but I hear they probably hate his guts too. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was about to say I wouldn't, but they could. You know. Yeah. By the way, I'm telling you, Liv Morgan looks like what's her name, like Mandy Rose. They look alike. <laughs> well, I told you that's why the two that's why the two of them will never be on the same show unless they're in a tag team. Well, unless they're a tag. <laughs> yeah, that's the only, that's the only way. It's kind of weird. Like if you if you look at the dynamic, like you know, I, I would I wouldn't say that it's like identical. But it's almost like it's almost like, like related, see yeah, sure. see the funny thing is Mandy Rose is like that that high school senior who's a complete cock tease like yeah, she, she like 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 she like she presents herself as like you know this yeah. sexy seductive you know all the dudes want to yeah it won't yeah it won't go anywhere but you know because she's a complete cock tease Liz the one that yeah the but but live like. but live. Liv Morgan, Liv Morgan is her sophomore younger sister, who yes. actually is a whore. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's just like between, between like doing stuff. Yeah, it's like everybody. Like, every, she got like the lollipop in there too. Yeah, you know, she got the lollipop. Like she dress, you know, like she, you know, she she dresses, you know, she dresses cool. Like she has, like she wears like the sneakers and everything and the baggy pants. Well, I gotta tell you, uh-huh. Randy Rose got that theme. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what did what did you think of the the con- is funny though when it, she comes out. What did you think of the continuation of um of the uh Mandy Rose Naomi storyline? I liked I liked it a lot because it well number one, it reminds me that something happened the last couple of years. No no not last year. In two thousand seventeen they did a lot of things really well that they didn't follow up on. Mm-hmm. AJ Styles didn't have matches the way he did in 2017, and I could say that for sure. And I could also he kind of took a backseat. And I could also say that one thing, and hey, Heyman's mic work kind of dropped off a little bit last year too. wasn't as good as the previous year. And the other thing they forgot about, they actually had in-depth storylines for the women, even if it didn't center around the title. Yes. And they've got away from that a bit. Yeah. So it reminded me uh-huh. of 2017 where, wait a minute, at one time I think the Blue Brand had three of them. Yeah, they had three, yeah, they had, they had three, they had three women's storylines. They had, they had, uh, they had um, uh, uh, Natalia feuding with one of the Bellas. With, with the, well, it was Nikki Carmella. Bell. It was Carmella. Because remember, yes. yeah, cause, cause every, cause remember, every time Carmella saw Nikki in the locker room, she beat her ass. That's what it was. <laughs> they had a bunch of different feuds. Yeah. And I'm like, it reminded me of that. So I'm glad yeah. that they actually decided to go with that. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly feel like they're setting it up to just be like a kickoff match for the Rumble. Yeah, that's fine. Which is, you know, it's okay. Yeah, because, because it's the Royal Rumble, I'm fine with the two of them having a kickoff match. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad they're giving them something to do where it's not just like you're rotting and sitting. In yeah, yeah, you're sitting and catering. Like, hey, it's my turn. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's like you're, they're giving them something to do besides sitting next to Shelton Benjamin and catering. Just the Uso's reaction I didn't like so much. Oh, when like, uh, he just got the hell beat out of her, he goes, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I know, I know, he's a Samoan, but the Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the one thing that I like about it. That I liked about it the most. The only fire was good. I yeah. liked it. Yes. It was more like it wasn't a promo. It was more like all right. Yes, and I, and I was about to say the thing that I like about it, I like the yeah, fact. I, I like the fact. Yeah, it, it was realistic to the sense where, when Mandy Rose did what she did out in the arena, she just didn't sell. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, she didn't. There was at one point, and this was pretty stiff. Uh, at one point, I think <laughs> Sonya Deville wanted to sell her punches, and she wouldn't. Yeah. So she, you could tell she's kind of MMA-ish because she is. Uh-huh. She gave her a stiff kick. Went, she went, oh, like you actually the sun. You can go back. I mean, I know you can't. 
yeah, network yeah, and stuff, yeah. so when you have time, go back just for that segment again, because it just happened. Mm-hmm. Watch that kick. It's a stiff kick. Yeah. It's almost like she was pissed, like, wait a minute, like, you were supposed to go down after yeah. my punches and you wouldn't. Yeah, she was like, sell, bitch. <laughs> so there's a thin line between that rage, but, I mean, at the same time, if you got two of them kind of jumping you, like, you got to sell a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't blame her, because for all I know, it was probably a note that she received where... They were like, whatever, you know, from what I understand from all these shoot interviews, too, a lot of the guys who get released will say one thing. Mm-hmm. They don't like the fact that there's eight chefs. Yeah. Not one chef, there's eight chefs, and it ain't Vince, and eight triple H, it's the road agents. Mm-hmm. So some will tell, like, one person one bit of, like, you know, instructions, the other one will tell someone someone else, and they just... It, it doesn't mesh, so I, I probably would say that it wasn't like Curtis, it was probably like them, one of the agents telling her, hey, don't sell no matter what. Like put up, put up, put up a fight and show that your that your love is yeah. that your love is. But see, but also like the problem with that is that. I understand like, the, the, the the SmackDown Road agents are Rude Dog, Dean Malenko, and uh, Fit Finley. And yeah. Fit Finley handles the, the women. Yeah, 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 yeah. So see, I. But the, Fit see, but, told the one one thing, and then Road Dog tells yeah. the other one thing, and it's like ah, uh, and then it came out looking stupid. Yeah, but yeah. no, but, but see, but, that part, it was good. but 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 also when when it's okay. a two, when it, when it's a, when it's a two on one jumping situation. Like if, if you're if you're a person, especially a woman, who's blinded in rage, but you know, there will be a moment where oh, yeah, where a moment. where despite We're the fact <laughs> yeah there, there will be a moment where despite the fact that you're getting beat up by two people, you're just so enraged. Yeah, the kicks in and you get, yeah. yeah, you just. Well, you, I was fine with that. I said, you yeah, know what? but if it's, if it's three beats, you know, one, two, three, but then it's gotta be selling. Yeah, yeah. But but the but the other but the other problem with that is because there are so many things going on at the same time, in order for her to react to it, because you are getting beat by multiple people, you actually do they actually do have to touch her just so she, just so she can act accordingly because because if because if everybody's throwing phantom punches and not really trying to hurt her She's getting jumped by two people, so she won't yeah. know. She won't know when to react to whose punches. That's why the roundhouse uh, kick was like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you have, stiff, like, like in order, like you, like at some point, one of them had to actually tag her. <laughs> but, you gotta see that roundhouse kick. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just like, I just like the fact that she did. I like the fact that she didn't. She, she didn't attack her. She didn't attack her on the stage. I like the. No, it was, it was, it was, and I like, and I like. It, it reminded me of like the, you know, again. Yeah. Keeping them rolling. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I also like the fact that when she saw them backstage, there was no talking. Yeah, it was. Just, and we're used to that, so it was a nice surprise. <laughs> yep, you know, and it's like when she saw them backstage, you're gonna get the you're gonna get these hands. <laughs> I'm gonna but, catch some dinner, but you're you're out tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, man, it's gonna it's gonna be two degrees tomorrow. So aside from going man, to, aside from going to church, I'll probably be in. Yeah, I forgot you're loaded up, man. You got stuff, but yeah, man, I'll talk. You know, I'll talk tomorrow. But hey, listen, try and dolls them. Try him. Yeah, <laughs> try Dallas him. <laughs> All right, I, I'll give, I'll give, him, I'll give him a whirl. Yeah, I, do, 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 yeah. I, I'll, I'll give, I'll give him a whirl. I guess so. Uh, well, you, you're not, you're not gonna get a chance to watch the UK pay per view tomorrow. Oh, uh, not live. No. Yeah, because because it's at, be like Sunday or Monday. Yeah, because it's actually it comes on tomorrow at two o'clock because of the time zone difference. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I guess so we'll, maybe, maybe, well, not live for sure, but probably maybe like during the night time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can check it out. There. Alright, yeah, if anything, we, 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 we can talk about that probably Sunday. So. Cool, man. Alright. Alright, man. Later.